So, we discussed about two important experiments in the 2D series of experiments that was the cozy and the double quantum filtered cozy. Now, so we will continue with the discussion of that and then of course go over to other experimental schemes. Okay. So, in this context it is important to uh, know some more concepts about the basics of the 2D experiments and that is uh, one of the important thing is the resolution in 2D spectra. So we should talk about the f1 dimension or all sometimes it is called the omega 1 dimension and the f2 dimensions. So, we have to worry about the resolution in the spectra in both of these dimensions. What does the resolution depend upon? So, if you want to call resolution as r then this is proportional to the inverse of the acquisition time. So, this is the acquisition time if t acquisition is the acquisition time then this is the resolution is inversely proportional to the acquisition time. What does that mean? This is similar to what we have talked in the case of the 1D spectra. Suppose I have the FID here and I have various points which are collected here, so many data points which I collect and then we say the total acquisition time is, is equal to suppose I collected n data points n times which is the dw n times dw which is the dwell time. This is the time between two consecutive points. This is the acquisition time. So, if you collect more data points, you have better resolution in your spectra. What does that mean? Then you have a line like this, then you will have these peaks points coming appropriately at various places in your in your line. So, therefore, the line will be represented better and the resolution will be higher if you collect more data points. In the case of the normal acquisition the one dimensional spectrum or even in the 2D the normal acquisition in the when we collect the FID it is simply the number of data points you collect. Okay. So, therefore, it is very easy to increase this resolution by increasing this number of data points. In the case of uh, F1 dimension the F1 dimension resolution will depend upon this is this is for the F2 dimension. Now, for the F1 dimension it will depend upon how many T1 increments we collect. Okay. Acquisition time along the T1 dimension will be let us say if I want to write as T1 acquisition is equal to T1 max let us say is equal to uh, n let us say now I call it as n1 times the increment. Now I call this increment as let us say i n. This is the same as the dw, is the same as the dw except that increment this is these are collected one by one, one by one this is systematically that many FIDs are collected. That means we have n1 FIDs collected. So, if you want to increase the acquisition time along the um, uh, F1 dimension, we will have to increase the number of increments, you have to increase the number of experiments, the number of FIDs you collect. So, therefore, it is a very time consuming process. Okay. So, uh, for example, if I collect here 2048 data points in the F2 dimension, this may go for let us say about 50 milliseconds, assuming hypothetically. So, that is uh, given the certain increment dwell time, it may go for 50 milliseconds. But if you want to increase from for this 4, 2048 to 4096, then it will go to 100 milliseconds. Okay, but that is no big deal. So, whether I collect the data for 50 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds, it is not going to increase my experimental time, data collection time too much. But if I want to increase the same in uh, the F1 dimension, if I want to collect uh, from 50 milliseconds acquisition time to 100 milliseconds acquisition time, I have to do twice as many experiments, twice as many FIDs. So, if the 50 millisecond spectrum is going to take me about uh, 10 hours, then if I want to make it 100 milliseconds, it will cost me uh, how much did I say? 10 hours, 20 hours. If it is going to collect 10 hours, it is going to be 20 hours. So, therefore, the number of increments is crucial here with regard to uh, the acquisition in the F1 dimension. 
So therefore, experimental time along T1 dimension has to be optimally adjusted. for the resolution we want. Now why is the why is the resolution important in the case of uh, uh, f1 dimension ok. We have seen that in the cosy and the double quantum filtered cosy. In the cosy and double quantum filtered cosy we let us say I have a cross peak like this ok. This is a cross peak. Okay. So this is in for cosy and dq of cosy we have seen that the cross peak for a two spin system has this kind of a structure right for a two spin system and the separation between them is the coupling constant. Now we will be able to see all these four components if only you have enough resolution if these lines are properly separated ok. So we can see this. only if there is enough resolution ok. So therefore along the f1 dimension it becomes crucial whereas along this this is the f2 this is the f1 ok. f2 dimension is not a problem I can easily increase from 1024 to 2048 or 4096 data points no problem at all. I can separate these two, but the separation along this axis, this is the crucial point. So therefore, always the limiting factor is the resolution along the F1 axis and this has to be optimally chosen. So typically one does 512 T1 increments in a cosy or DQ of cosy experiment. If the coupling constant is very small then you will have to collect more. So what is the consequence if there is not enough resolution what will happen ok. If there is not enough resolution then this positive and the negative ones the positive and the negative components these come too close and then then to cancel their intensities. They will cancel their intensity therefore overall your signal to noise ratio in the cross peak will get reduced. Even if you have good resolution here, if these peaks are well separated along the F2 axis, if this resolution is not enough, if they are not well separated, then they will cancel and your cross peak will have very low intensity and sometimes you may lose it also. If it is very small like 1 hertz or 2.5 hertz, you may completely cancel it out and you may not see the cross peak at all. Therefore, this actually is a quite a important limitation for, uh, for, the, um, for those kind of experiments where you have uh, cosy and uh, where you have antiphase characters. Antiphase characters meaning plus minus components along these cross peaks ok. So this is so far as the two spin systems are concerned. Now we should go and see how the spectra look like if you have uh, three spins or more ok. So then we let, let us look at the fine structures cross peak fine structures. in 3 spin systems let us say the 3 spins are a m x okay these are all of spin half all of them are i is equal to half okay so we label them as a m x and of course these can be connected in two different ways a m x or this way also a m x ok. So this is the way you can have two different patterns here. So what will happen what will be the fine structure in the cross peaks. Let us look at once again the schematic here of the 2D spectrum. So here we have f1, f2 and I will have here 3 diagonal peaks let us say and let me call this as A, 
call this as m and call this as x ok. Now what cross peaks do we see? So we will see a cross peak here and a cross peak here a to m in the case of if it were a linear system we will have two different things. So let me let me draw that here and of course you will have for the linear system how it will look let me draw that here. For the linear system this we call it as the linear system. So A m x this is A this is m this is x. So A to m there is a cross peak here and therefore there will also be cross peak here and m to x also there will be coupling there is also cross peak here there is also cross peak here because you remember these ones are j coupled this happens through j coupling. Okay, this should be in the same line. So this happens through j coupling. Now in the case of this one this is the diagonal we can write it as A here, M here, X here. I will have the same as before here and here but now I will also have this because I also have A to X coupling right. A to X coupling I will also have M to X this also will be there, this will be there and this will also be there. So the in the case of this triangular coupling pattern I will have a different kinds of a structure and the pattern overall pattern of the peaks. Of course in each of these peaks there will be a fine structure that is what we are going to see. So in this case depending upon which peak we are talking about which coupling constant is responsible for the peak that is important to see ok. So now if you are looking at this each one of them of course there is what will be the 1D spectrum for a such a kind of a thing if A M X let me draw the 1D spectrum of those that A has a coupling to M therefore it will be a doublet A will be a doublet and what will be M? M has two couplings therefore it has a, it will be a doublet of a doublet let me go. and this is M and what will be X and X has only one coupling therefore that will also be a doublet. So this is X okay this is M and this is A in the same order which I am writing here. So how this will be here now each of them here has two couplings each spin has two couplings right. So therefore each one of them will be a doublet of a doublet. Okay. So this is X, this is M, this is A and this fine structure will show up in the cross peaks and the diagonal peaks as well. Okay. Now which peak, which coupling is responsible for which cross peak? Suppose I take here, I will take the M A M cross peak. Okay. In the A M cross peak, this is arising from the coupling from A to M. Okay. If I see here M this cross peak I use let me use a different color let us say I take this cross peak or this cross peak it is coming from the coupling from A to M it is not coming from the coupling from M to X because of the M, M, M to X peak will be here. So therefore there are two couplings in the M and these ones we distinguish them as active coupling and the passive coupling. Okay. So uh, else we are looking at the particular peak and blow up this here and this side is the A and this side is the M I have this two things here. So what will be the structure of these how many peaks will be there? 
So, okay, we will see that. Okay. Now, the A is a doublet and M is a doublet of a doublet and therefore, if I take this product here, there will be that many peaks inside here. Okay. So, therefore, each one of these there will be peaks to all the 4, each one of these from this also there will be 4 peaks here, from here also there will be 4 peaks there. So, there will be total of 8 components in this peak. This is my F2 axis, this is my F1 axis. There will be 8 components. Now, what is the sign pattern here? In the case of a 2 spin system, we said plus minus plus minus. How it will be here? Okay. So, this peak is arising from from J A M. Okay. Therefore, J A M is called as the as active coupling. And in the M there is also this MX splitting JMX which will be present only along the F2 axis this is called as the as the passive coupling. This is not responsible for the cross peak, but it will certainly contribute to the splitting. Okay. So, now if I want to write the splitting pattern of both the spins A and M, suppose I have this A chemical shift here and this splits because of the A M coupling as in the case of double counterfeited cosy or the cosy and this splits this produces inside there because of the active coupling plus and minus. So, therefore, inside here there will be pluses and minuses this splitting will lead to plus and minus. And what about the M? This is the A, this is the new A. Let me write here new M. New M will also show the A M coupling which is the active coupling. Active coupling leads to plus minus splitting as in the as we have seen in the double quantum filtered cosy or the cosy. Now, what does the MX coupling do? Because this will be further split because of the MX coupling. Therefore, this will be further split into 2 but now this will not produce me plus and minuses, it will produce plus plus minus minus and here this is J A M, this is also J A M. And this is J M X, this is J M X. Okay. So, now using this, what I will do? I will draw what will be the structure of this A M cross P. Let me draw that once more here. This is this side is A. A, what is the structure? I will have plus minus splitting. Along this side I will have plus, plus, minus, minus because the M has this sort of a structure. So, now if I multiply these two what I should get here? I will get here plus, plus, minus, minus. Now I multiply with the minus sign here there I will get here minus, minus, plus, plus. Minus into minus gives me plus therefore inside here I will have this sort of a structure. This is provided J A M is greater than J M X. Okay. What happens if the uh, M X coupling is larger than A M coupling? Let us also draw that. So, if this is for that situation right. So, this is for J A M greater than J M X. If the other thing happens let us say new M, 
j a m is smaller than j m x this is j a m this is plus minus. Now I have splitting m x is larger ok. So now from here to here it is j m x. So what will be the structure here? This will be plus plus here and this will be minus minus here ok. So what is the thing we will get? So therefore if I want to draw that here below this side will be plus minus as before but now this will be plus minus plus minus and this will be minus plus minus plus. So this is the case when j a m is smaller than j m x. So this is j a m is smaller than j m x. Therefore it is very crucial to see what sort of a pattern you will get in your finds in your in the cross peak and this will tell you what uh, kind of precautions one should take in doing your experiments. So to anal analysis of the spectra has to take care of all of these factors when you want to measure the coupling constants from the cosy spectra. And this is true for both cosy as well as double quantum filtered cosy. Now what will be the nature of the uh, AX coupling? In, 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 there is no AX peak here, we have talked about the AM and similar thing will be for the MX also. MX also will be for in the same manner you will have uh, in the linear system, we are talking about the linear system here. Now this is for the linear system. So the pattern will be similar for, for MX cross peak okay. and uh, what, about, what about this peak? Let us look at the peak where this side is M this side is A and what will be that? Okay, here, here we have a doublet, so this will be a doublet and here we will have plus plus minus minus. So therefore and this will produce me plus minus plus minus minus plus minus plus. So therefore you see the symmetry is broken, the peaks do not look identical. In other words what I am trying to say here is, so if I look in the 2D spectrum, this is my M and this is my A, this is my X, so I had here A, M, X, so I have the cross peak here, the cross peak here and the cross peak here and the cross peak here. So this is what we are looking at, right. So I showed you what is the structure for the AM cross peak and that was A was on this side, M was on this side. In this case, this case is the case what I have shown here and this is M so this side is plus plus minus minus this is plus minus so I will have plus 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 minus 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 ah sorry plus minus plus minus minus plus minus plus so this will be the uh, structure for the other peak yeah so therefore depending upon which peak you are looking at you will have the different fine structure so point to remember therefore is the active coupling leads to plus minus splitting, a passive coupling leads to plus plus splitting. Okay. So this is so far as the uh, linear spin system is concerned. Now if I want to take a triangular spin system, 
this sort of a thing. Now I will have here this is the diagonal this is A M X I will have a cross peak here a cross peak there cross peak here cross peak there a cross peak here cross peak there ok. So, all these are cross peaks. Now, in each one of them we will have one active coupling and one basso coupling ok in the same line ok. So, each one of them will have uh, let us say I have uh, this is A x that is this peak. it is this peak A x. So, what will be the active coupling here? Here J A x is active coupling because this cross peak is arising as a result of coupling between A and x this is the same here ok and the x is also coupled to m ok. So, the x multiplied will have a coupling and also the m coupling and j m x is the passive coupling accordingly one can draw the various structures. Now, suppose I take a different uh, cross peak let me say I take this cross peak. What is this cross peak? This cross peak is m on this side because this is all a m x. This cross peak if I am taking remember I am not taking this when I draw here if I draw here m if I draw here x then it is this cross peak active and passive couplings will be the same in both cases, but the fine structures will be different depending upon which cross peak you are taking. The if I take m here and x here then which is this um, uh, active coupling j m x is active coupling and what is the other coupling it has x you know, along this side I have the m x coupling and a x coupling ok. Now, j a x notice this side this side I have x multiplet this side I have m multiplet. So, therefore, all the three couplings are appearing here right. So, a x is is the is the passive coupling and j a m is also passive coupling let me demonstrate that here ok. Let us draw the m multiplet ok for this particular case the m multiplet is plus minus from j m x and let us say m x is greater than a m this is plus plus minus minus and this is j a m coupling and now this is for m I draw let me draw the same thing for uh, a for the x and x again I will draw here j m x is plus minus because this is the active coupling now those now this will have a different coupling here and what is this one here this is j a x here it was a m here it is a x because we are talking about the multiple multiplet structure of the x spin. 
therefore the patterns will be can be different depending upon what is the relative magnitudes of the two couplings. Therefore the fine structure of this is plus plus minus minus and this is also plus plus minus minus. So if I draw that here now this is this side is x and this side is m and here we wrote as plus plus minus minus and this side also was plus plus minus minus. So what will be the structure multiply these two ones plus plus minus minus once again plus plus minus 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 plus plus minus minus plus plus. So 16 components so each of the cross peak here will have 16 components unlike in the previous case depending upon how many couplings are present in each multiplet structure you will have you have to multiply that by that many components. So if one side has 4 components other side has 2 then there will be 8 components in the uh, cross peak if uh, both sides have 4 4 then you will have 16 components in the structure and the combination of the plus or the locations of the pluses and the minuses will depend upon relative magnitudes of the coupling constants okay. The fine structure will depend on 1 the active and passive couplings and 2 relative magnitudes of the active and passive couplings. Third, the peak appearances uh, appearances on the two sides of the diagonal will be different. Okay. So these are the important features of cosy and double quantum filtered cosy spectra. Uh, they, I mean there can be more combinations of course if you have 4 spins there will be further splittings if you have more spins there will be further splitting but the active coupling will always be 1 remember this. No matter how many spins are there how many couplings are there the active coupling will always be 1 all others will be passive couplings. So therefore that is what is important in calculating the fine structure in each of the cross peaks. These will be directly used I am going through this so much detail because this will be directly used when we actually look at the uh, splitting patterns in the spectra of nucleic acids and proteins and this is our ultimate aim is that we want to see how we can analyze the 2D spectra and the 3D spectra of, of proteins and nucleic acids which are very relevant from the point of view of structural biology calculating the structures of the molecules this becomes very important. Okay. So we will stop here.